Dane Young here with UGASports.com, joined by Colby Calais, the inspiration for Stetson Bennett. And if you don't have the context for that, here's Stetson Bennett explaining how that's the case. Are you going to go to songs when it comes to that routine? Um, yeah, yeah, I've got one. I don't know if I should say it, but it's uh, it's Bubbly by Colby Calais. <laughs> I love that song. That's my song. So, Colby Calais, welcome. Thank you. What do you think about Bubbly becoming a sports anthem? You know, uh, it's something that you least expect, right? But I think it's the sweetest thing. I love just how, like, charming and sincere he was in his response. And actually, after I, I got sent that, um, I, I followed him on Instagram. And so now we're Instagram friends. And he let me know that it gets him, like, in, like, a, a good um, – place like mentally rather than getting like revved up it, it helps him think like clearly so I thought that was really sweet to hear and it was amazing to know that my song could do that for such a talented young man so now y'all are Instagram friends I feel like maybe <laughs> you should be breaking some news telling me about Stetson Bennett uh, what's that like for you because I, I don't imagine you're often getting athletes saying that your music hypes them up right no, yeah, it's been rare. Like there's occasional, you know, other artists or actors, but um, I think it's rare when an athlete says, especially before their game, before they play, and they're so successful and talented. And, and you know, for a song like Bubbly, where it's just very mellow and calming, uh, it is an interesting like juxtaposition, but um, I love it. It makes me happy to hear. I asked some friends of mine and I said, what do you think it is about this song for him? And they said that it may be as simple as the, can you count me in? That like that kind of like is a good vibe. Um, is there a story behind that being the, the beginning of the song? Honestly, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing because when I wrote the song, I played the guitar a little different. And my producer, Michael Blue, when he was recording the guitar for the album, he played it differently. And so for some reason, I couldn't get my timing right. And I was getting frustrated. And I was like, oh, will you count me in? And he was like, that was so sweet. And I was like, no, it's not sweet. It's embarrassing. Like, I don't even know when to come in on my own song. And then he wanted to keep it, and I actually fought him on it for a while, but uh, he won, and he was right. Yeah, I would say. So now I should tell you, there was a second song that he mentioned, and I don't know if this found its way to you, but Bubbly was the first song that he mentioned. The second was Juicy by Notorious B.I.G. Oh my God, I love that song so much. I literally, I listen to Biggie before I go on stage, which is kind of funny because it hypes me up for sure. Oh, kindred spirits, you and Stetson Bennett, then. This is, this is <laughs> wonderful. Um, but I had never thought of Juicy and Bubbly being in the same genre, but I think now they are. You know, they can do different things. You need, you know, like he said, like clarity and then also just to like feel excited. So that's really cute. Uh, do you follow college football at all? Is that anything in your world? It is not at all in my world, but a lot of my guy friends do. So I've heard, of, and, and I know it just started like last week and I know how excited they all were. So um, it was, I was excited to let them know uh, that Stetson, you know, likes my song. So have you ever been to Athens? Do you like it? Um, I don't know if I have, but I definitely want to go to a game. I think it'd be fun if my friends and I went down there for a game and, you know, it's a close, it's easy, short drive. I mean, at this point, I think you have a pretty good hookup if you want to go to a game. Just get on Instagram and, and message your buddy Stetson. Um, do you have any other good stories behind the, the song Bubbly? I know you co-wrote it with Jason Reeves, and this was back in the MySpace days and, and leading into early in your career. But any stories about the song or what it's about or what the lyrics mean? Yeah, so I wrote the song. It's actually the one of the only songs I've written that's not about a certain person in particular. It's about the idea of love when I was 20 years old. And I actually wrote it because I was a brand new guitar player and I was at this jam night at a friend's house. And my friend Shane, he tuned my guitar into open D and I was used to standard tuning. And so I took my guitar home and I didn't know how to play it. And I had to just mess around and I found these three really pretty chords and they were so simple. And that's how I wrote Bubbly. So I never would have written it if my friend didn't change the tuning. And then also my other friend from high school didn't put my song, did put Bubbly on MySpace. So I, I had so many people that like it all came together because of. And so I'm grateful for that. Do you know anything about Stetson Bennett's story at all? I don't know if you're friends that maybe call, follow college football. So he, he was not recruited to play really at all. And he came on as a walk on, did not have a scholarship was the last quarterback on the roster, transferred out to go to a junior college to try to find uh, some playing time. 
came back, saved the team when they didn't really have a quarterback, but then got benched again. And now he's approaching 25 years old, final year in college football. And it's kind of the rags to riches story of no one had expectations for him. And now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league and, and potentially in the country. So um, I don't know if that underdog story resonates with you at all, but it sounds like there's some happenstance in your career that, that maybe aligns with that. That's incredible. Yeah, I think I saw something today. I saw a post about him, um, about how, you know, there were people that maybe didn't believe in him and how you just have to believe in yourself and you have to have like a support system around you and you have to just give it your all and not give up. And for me, I was very fortunate in how my career unfolded, but I wasn't prepared for it. So I actually had to do all the hard work in the spotlight after my career took off. Normally it happens for people beforehand. And so I had to do it, you know, on live TV and, uh, you know, on my first tour with the Goo Goo Dolls, I had to learn all of it as I went. And it was the most challenging time of my life, but I'm so glad I had to get through it and, and, and work my butt off. And I, I, I feel like I was then, um, I feel like I earned it over time. And I know you're a California native, but uh, you live in the in the South now, right? Aren't you in Tennessee? Oh yeah, I live in Nashville. Um, has any of the Southern ways of football and the culture has that kind of like, I guess, weaved in who you are a little bit? Have you seen that from Nashville? You know, I I've uh, I've been to one Titans game. Um, otherwise, before you know, my ex fiance Justin, he was a Bears fan, so we would go to Bears games all the time. I would sing at the national anthem for tons of games for. Well, for all sports, but um, and now in Nashville, we're, we're friends with the Predators. So uh, I get to and I never was into hockey. And now I'm like, I love going to games and it's so much fun and like rooting on my friends. Like it's it's just different. Oh, yeah. The Predators have taken over that city. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, wh what's new for you? What's next for you? Fans that maybe like your music, like Stetson Bennett. What's coming <laughs> up in your world? Uh, I have a new album that I recorded actually last year and I'm uh, just, you know, putting the finishing touches on it. So uh, some new music should be out this year, but for sure a full new album next year. Well, I need to give you a bit of credit, too, because the first song in the, that I danced to with my wife at our wedding was one of your songs. Oh. And it's not one of the, I guess, hits, so to speak, but never got away. I think it came out in 2016. It was just really integral to the story that my wife and I had where we were both coming from situations to where we didn't want the other one to let us get away. And so the lyrics were so beautiful and meaningful. So I credit us, me and my wife, for staying married, obviously, but uh, I guess some credit has to go to you, too. I love that. Where do you guys live, by the way? Uh, Athens, Georgia now, but we met in Auburn, Alabama, and she uh, got some degrees there. I was working in local television. Okay. I was going to say you guys could uh, should come to my show. I have my 15-year anniversary of my first album, Coco. I'm on the East Coast in October, but... Uh, so if you guys want to come to a show, let me know. Love it. Ooh, I may find, look, I, I have mooched off of, uh, people and connections and friends. I, I may send a follow-up message and say, Colby said, let's do this. Do it. Look at a date and let me know. Would love to have you guys. Awesome. Um, any final thoughts just about like, I know people in the room kind of, I don't want to say they laughed at Stetson, but you kind of saw him say, you know, he was a little bit embarrassed to say this or didn't know if he should, because it was so the juxtaposition, yeah. I guess. Any final thoughts on just how this came to be? I just think it's sweet. Like, you, you know, like it is a song that is unexpected. And for him to be vulnerable and not care if people laughed or thought it didn't make sense. Like that's, you know, they're used to the answer being probably a, a very like up-tempo hype song. And so I love that he was vulnerable and shared that. And he seemed so sincere. And uh, I hope, you know, it made me feel good. And I hope it inspires people just to speak their truth. Well, he's already helped Georgia win one national championship last season, especially if he goes and does it again. I think you're going to have some Georgia fans in your corner <laughs> for, for life for being part of his inspirations. So, exactly. Colby, thank you for joining us. Uh, it was so nice of you to do this on a whim for uh, a sports interview. And forevermore, I'm calling Bubbly a sports anthem, whether you want it to be or not. <laughs> well, thank you, Dane. I appreciate that. And it was nice talking with you.